Hello aspiring developers, welcome back to today's session where we are going to learn about conditional choices in JavaScript. In day-to-day -day life, we need to make informed decisions depending on some conditions. So also in coding, we also have ways of making informed choices depending on some decision or conditions that we set to our project. So if you're ready for today's session, let's dive right in. Okay, so there are resources that can be found and I'm going to be referencing them. So you just tap on Java programmers, then here you have to use this repository. Then you go to learn web development and these were the resources like the notes, the readme notes that I'm using during the session are being stored. Yeah, so as you can see here, we have is a full web development course all the way from html css to javascript now we are in javascript we just tap on javascript and in javascript you find these folders where the readme repositories are depending on the day of the specific day of that uh, of the notes provided So now uh, you can see here from the readme, we're going to learn about making choices and deciding paths. So in programming, there are several ways that you can use to decide between two things. And uh, you can test against conditions using the conditional statements. So the if statement this is the syntax. You say if condition and uh, the provided block of code will be executed. Then the else statement, if I told that condition is false, then the else statement will be executed. We also have the else if statement where you can test a, a pros against multiple conditions. Then the ternary operator is a shorthand form for the if else statement. We also have the switch case statement, which tests uh, a condition from also uh, a value. And here we learn about the break and continue. Break is used especially in loops, same, just same to continue. So when you learn switch statement, you're going to learn about the break keyword. So you say that break is used to enjoy script switches and break keyword. Now let's head over to our files. You can see I already have a index.html file and a script.js file. So in my index.html, I'll just type the exclamation to generate this uh simple structure for html i'm going to write the title here of which these are titles so javascript conditions yeah then in body i'm going to create a main tag and in the main tag i'm going to have my h1 tag and in the h1 tag i'll write our title for today which is let's learn conditions I'm also going to include my external, sorry, to link my external JavaScript file using the script tag and the src attribute. src equals and my file name, my external file name, which is script.js. So when I control click this src, it will take me to my open JavaScript folder. So you just need to control click. So now we are in JavaScript where we want to test all the codes of conditional statements practically. So now that I've fired up my terminal, just control back tick or control shift back tick for you to fire up your terminal. So now here is the syntax for writing if you just write if condition as I'd already seen earlier. If condition and then you open the curly braces or the curly brackets and uh, here is where the block of code that will be executed when that condition is true. Then you also have to have the else statement. And here, this block of code will be executed only if the... So in, in the first one, we said that it is executed only if it is true. So the else will be executed if it is false. Just write here true, then also edit here to false. So that is the syntax for if else. Now let's put it into practice. 
here i'll declare a variable condition on so let's say let condition on uh, i'll also declare the variable condition two so let's say let condition two condition two uh, leave them as undefined for now then now i write the if so if then condition one condition one and then the block of code to be executed i'll say console.log i'll log this to the console and here you write the statement that you want to be executed so for example you can say condition is met and always remember to have the else statement so i'll just write else and let me paste this here else then i paste here so condition is not met So now here we have that if statement with the condition one and the we're logging to the console condition is met if it is true and condition is not met if it is false. So now let's comment out this syntax. So now uh, we've initialized let condition one and two both to be true. So now you see that the if condition will test if condition one is true there you can see that it uh, in our case it's true so now we can run this script to see the output that we are going to find so node script.js and we see that condition is met is what is output in our console so you see that if condition one it has tested condition one and it has found it to be true now it outputs the console.log it executes the block of code within the curly braces the else block here is being ignored once the condition is true. So now let's out output it to false. Let's change the condition to be false. And then we run this line of code again. So node script.js, you run this code. You see that condition is not met. Now, the condition one uh, in the if was found to be false here. So now if it is false, it executes the else the code in the else block and that's why you see that our output has console uh, our console has condition is not met as the output yeah, so if it tests for the condition if it's true it outputs the code within the if then if it's false it outputs the code within the else block yeah so now let's test on the multiple else if statement multiple if statement so here we're going to have else if condition two then let's paste the block of else code that we copied okay let me just edit this remove these calibrations yeah so let's save it so now here we have we are testing across two conditions if the first condition is met let's say condition one is met the second condition is met let's say condition true is met else we're going to say no condition is met let's just edit here so you notice that we already initialized the variables condition one and condition two condition one is false condition two is true so now it will test if condition one is true and it will execute the block of code within that and it will ignore all the remaining code so it will ignore else if and it will also ignore the else but if condition true is met it will output it will execute the block of code within the else if and then it will ignore the else statement so that's it let us just run this script and see it in action so node.js node script.js node or first let's uh, set condition one to true so that we see the first block of code node script.js uh, so you see that condition one is met is logged to the console because the if tested condition one and found it to be true so it ignores all the remaining parts of the code but if condition one is set to false to false yeah so if we run this code we're going to see that condition two is met so condition one is false now it is going to call the next the next line which is the else if so if the else if is met uh, console uh, the, our console is logged with with condition 
true is met because condition true is set to true. But then it will now ignore the else. So now let's set the condition true to false and run the script again. So you see that no condition is met. So you realize that if the first condition is false, the second is also false. Now the else block will be called and you'll see that no condition yeah, So you've noticed is met. that uh, only the only one condition is being tested here, but you can use multiple if statements or nested if statements. So you can say if condition one, then you the code of block of code to be executed, and then you nest another if. So you say if condition two. I believe you understand the term nesting. Then you the block of code to be executed. So here you can let's pick this console dot log. For condition two and we paste it here then you can also have the else statement for the condition two so let's just take else then we paste here the condition and say condition two is not met condition sorry condition no condition is met so you can make it a bit descriptive so you say condition two is not not met yeah then you should also remember to have the else for the else block for the parent if statement. So else, I believe in nesting you learned about children and parents. So the else, the else block for the parent if statement. So now this block of code is the nested if else statement. And the final else will only output if the parent if statement is not met. So if condition one is false, then you're going to expect that no condition is met. All of them will fail because, let's comment this so you can see it in action. Yeah. So as we said here, we have condition one as false. First, let's set all of them to true so that you can see it first in action. So now we're going to test if condition one is true. And if it is true, we're going the block of code within condition the if will is going to be executed and that is testing again for condition two which will only work if condition one is true so if it if condition two is also true it will log to the console that and if it is false it will log the else statement to the piece of code so let's edit this to be a bit more descriptive let's make it a bit more discreet descriptive yeah, so now you see that the if will only be uh, will only be executed if condition one is true, and the else will only be executed if it is false. So let's clear the terminal and uh, run this code again. Yeah, so you see that we had, uh, the console has logged condition one. Condition two is met. Why? Because the condition one was first evaluated as true. And the block of code within the if statement was was then executed. Yeah, so now let's set condition one to false so that we can see the else statement of the parent if because we are nesting, so we run it. So in, once we run this script, you see that all conditions failed. This is output because it has tested the if and it has found it to be false, so it will ignore all the code block of code within that, and it will only output the block of code within the else statement and that's why we see all conditions failed so now let's return condition one to true so that we can see the nested if how it works condition one set to true and now let's set condition two to false so now we have condition one as true so the else will be ignored and condition two we've set it to be false so now we already had condition one as true and it will test against and see if it's true. So such that the code of block within the if, the if within it will be executed. And we see that the if condition two is set to false else. Hence, the else block is the one that will be executed. The else block within the second if statement. And you see the else block is descriptive saying condition one is met, but condition two is not, is not met. So let's run this script. Node script.js. So you see that 
condition 2 is not met but condition 1 is met because condition 1 is set to true and that is why we are even running the block of code in condition 2 so it finds it false and it, it ignores the the if the block of code within the nested if and then it runs the block of code within the else so that's it for the nested if statements yeah so in a face with a situation that you need to decide between something for you to do a specific task then it is good to use if statements in javascript and so that's it for the if statement now let's comment this out i want to reuse this upper block of code let me just push it so that it's uh, the last line of code there and then comment it and now we want to test the nested if using a switch case statement so if is the first conditional statement that we know of in javascript if the else if and the else now we want to test the switch switch case statement a real world example of if statement or rather let's say switch now that we're learning switch statement is like in an uh like ho a hotel menu where there is an order so you need to pick that order and maybe output something that uh, has been ordered so now here is the syntax of the switch case statement so you say switch then you pick the key then you open the curly braces and say case one or the value of that case depending on the number of cases use a colon then the break statement uh, then you return the default also and you have a sem uh, full colon there and break close it with a semicolon and you can first log the console whatever the default value you want to be let's just clear the terminal so i can show you an easier way of writing the switch case syntax so you just type switch if you're using vs code switch then you tap on this lower one and it will output the complete switch case code for you so that you can just edit a few things you can see it has the key it has the value and it has those break and default values so you can just edit those let's clear this and now let's dive into real world examples now that you know switch case statement i'm going to initialize a variable order and i'm going to switch that order and test it across some multiple uh, orders that are given by a user so let's say switch order order sorry uh, calibrates then the first case i'm going to have case one as a uh, let's say the order is uh what can we put here let's say t something like t here yeah. believe t colon then now we can log to the console let's console log and uh, output some statement say the the order is t or order is t and let's just say order is t then now we repeat now first remember to break then now we go to the next case let's say coffee so if it's coffee then you can log to the console order is coffee order is coffee and uh, is coffee yeah then you can also break that you break it and then now let's uh, have a third one order let's take maybe cappuccino I don't even know the spelling of cappuccino. Cappuccino. Oh, okay. I believe that's it. I'm not sure though. Yeah, so here we're going to log to the console. Oh, sorry, we log to the console. Just do this here. Going to log to the console. Order is, oops, copied the wrong thing. Let me just copy it again. Yeah, and let's paste here. So we log to the console. Order is cappuccino. So I have prettier in that if I save, you see that uh, it organizes my code to very beautiful indentations. So I break that and now, like we said, when you have switch, you have to have a default value. So let us have a default value. In a really odd example, you can maybe log to the console. There is no such order. Or yeah, can say something like that. There is no such order. But there is just no order. Yeah, so we already have our switch case statement in a real world scenario yeah so now let's understand our line of uh our few lines of code first we started by initializing the order variable and then we 
switch that order variable to the case of first to the case of t and then we log to the console uh, the value of t we switch it to the case of coffee we log to the console the value of coffee we test that order which is our key against the con uh, cappuccino and we get cappuccino and the default in case all those are not met we have uh, there is no such order as our default value so this order is the main uh, variable that you're going to test across all these cases yeah so now let's clear the terminal and we see this in action let's run the script node script.js uh, first we need to comment out this if so that uh, we can have control of the switch yeah so script.js not script.js yeah so when you run this you see that there is no order so there is no such order because order is undefined see that the variable was uh, declared to undefined so it switches and it tests the variable order against all those cases and it finds the value to be undefined so if you hover you just see that order is set to be undefined so if the case is undefined it uh, will output the default value which is there is no such order and that is what is there in the terminal but you, you also have to have a break even after the default because break statements are important because they end the loop of a statement so now let's uh, initialize this order to maybe the value t such that you can have can test the first case and now you see that order is t has been output to our console so now that uh the the test the switches are having the key as order and it takes that order which has the value t now and it tests across the case of which here the case uh case one we're having t as the first case so if that condition is met it will output order is t you see that all the others are not touched because we have a break to stop that switch case statement so now let's go live uh, and see this in our website because we're doing web development let me control click this such that it can open my website oops it has opened on javascript let me just uh, have it to open on html perfect let's learn conditions so oops sorry i want to open the developer options control shift i or you just right click and inspect yeah so you see that we have on our console order is t and if you look at the elements we are having our script stack linked in our html and the script is seen in the console so i can now go and uh, add some input user input prompt in our HT, in our javascript code so now we can define the order we can let the order to be undefined i believe we are not using the terminal so let's close it for now Uh, we should close this terminal and yeah, now let's prompt the user to input the value of the order so use here the prompt function i believe uh, i haven't uh, explained functions to you yet but uh, we're coming to that so you say prompt and then there you input the value that you want the user to see because the user will just see an empty prompt if you leave it blank so here we'll put some descriptive value like maybe say enter or maybe yeah so you just please input your order so now the the user will see please input your order in a prompt the prompt as you said it's a pop-up and then that value will be stored in the order variable because we already defined it as as an uh, it is an undefined variable order but now i've passed the value of the prompt to the variable and now the switch case the switch case is going to test the that variable across the the cases that you've provided there so now we can go to the browser and see the magic behind this switch case statement in practice or better still you can just initialize and uh, pass that directly to the variable i believe shorter codes is better because uh, it makes your code optimized or rather makes it very fast and very light so now let's go to the browser let me cancel this for now 
I, re I reload. So now here we are prompted to input the the order. You see that whatever we wrote is what it, what was there. So if we input t, you see that we have order is t. Let me reload. Sorry, I was trying to reload. Yeah. And now if we put something like coffee. Tap on OK, you see that order is coffee. Then uh, we can also try and, uh, yeah, order is coffee. Then we can also try and maybe input the third value, which was cappuccino. Now let's input cappuccino. Tap on OK. So you see that order is cappuccino. So whatever we're typing there is being stored in the order variable, and that is what is being tested in the switch across the given tests. So now let's input something which is not there. And you see that we see there is no such order because we don't have that one catered for in our code. But in case we have the default value that if those cases are all not met, it will output the default value. And in our case here, you see that the default value is there is no such order. So now let's understand the break keyword. Come here and delete all these breaks, break keywords. Let's remove them. Yeah, we save this code. Now let's go back to our browser and see. Uh, I think this is the catched value. Yeah, this is catched. So the break has not worked yet. I see it's okay on our code. Yeah, let's just refresh the browser and run again. So here let's input t as our value. So when you tap on okay, now you see that we're having all those lines of code being printed. We see that order is t has been printed order is coffee order is cappuccino there is no such order so that is because we do not have a break keyword all the statements will be will be executed if the first from where the first condition is met so the first case was true and it, it logs that to the console and now all the others are also logged to the console because there is no break keyword to stop the compiler from running those other codes within the, the code. So now let's test break in the second statement. I want us to understand break better. So if we, if the first test case, like let's say for instance, the user inputs T, it will log the first and the second to the console, then it will find the break keyword and it will stop at that point. So let's test it. Uh, let's say for instance you put T, oh, you're having an error. Which error is this? Okay. I think it had just sketched some writings. Let's refresh. Yeah, so let's say T. Say okay. So now you see that order is T and order is coffee are what have been printed to the to the console. Uh, let me just uh, close this. Yeah. So here you see that uh, we have logged order is t and order is coffee to the console then it finds the break keyword and that is where it stops so it does not continue printing the other ones but if you remove the break keyword at that point uh, okay let's just refresh the browser yeah see we remove the break keyword at that point you are going to output everything that is there but with the break keyword you are going to on to output until the point that the code finds the break but if you refresh, you see that if you input nothing, it still outputs. There is no such order. But if we output from the first, you see that all will be outputted from the first value. So if you try and output coffee, you see that the first one was false, so it does not output that. But from where it was true, which case is equals to coffee, all the way down, yeah, from here, all the way down to where it finds the break, all that will be logged to the console. So that is how important the break keyword is when you're coding in switch case statements. So let's just return the break keyword. Just return the break keyword. Uh, also, it is important to note that, uh, okay, let me have it all first, break. And yeah, now we have all our break keywords and our codes are now okay. So as I was saying, it is also important to note that the break keyword is the last thing that will be executed in a switch case statement once that, uh, let's say, test has already been uh, passed through. So anything that is written after the break keyword becomes invalid. You can see when it's almost dimmed in the Visual Studio code. So if you run your code 
and maybe say cappuccino is the value. So when you say okay, you see that order is cappuccino has been printed to the console. Then break break has has occurred, and now this console.log does not happen because break keyword marks the last point of uh, maybe that block of code within the case statement. So you should not have anything after the break keyword. So that's it on switch case and uh, break. For continue, we'll understand it better when we learn about loops. So I believe uh, switch case is well explained. Now that we've used a real world simulation example, you can now easily use it in your codes to do some bit of magic. Yeah, so that's it on switch. Uh, let us just comment this out. And uh, we can now learn the ternary operator. I want to uncomment this if and else. I just need the if and the else so we can use it to learn the ternary operator. Yeah, let me uncomment this. I believe we don't need the browser anymore, so let's just close it so we can have a complete screen here. We can also close the server. Yeah, so now, ah, okay, we don't need the else, the if and the else if, but we only need the if statement. So let me also comment this if and else if, so I can uncomment only the if and the else statement. So here you see that uh, condition one is true, condition two is false. For the else if, let me just run the script so you can remember how if and else if works. So you see that condition one is met. So it checks whether uh, condition one is true and it outputs that to the console. And if condition and it ignores all the all the other blocks of code. Yeah, so for now let's remove this else if first so that we can only explain if and else. That way it will be easier for you to understand the ternary operator. So let's just say condition is met and no condition is met. So when you run this to the console, you see that uh, its condition is met because condition one is set to true. So you can set condition one to false. And when you run this to the console, you see that, uh, let's just clear and then you run. You see that no condition is met. So the if and the else are now okay. But now we want to test if and else using the ternary operator. You see here it's around four lines of code. And that one makes the code a bit slow, but now we want to optimize it. So the syntax for the ternary operator is condition. And then the exclamation mark, that is the symbol for the ternary operator. And here, whatever will be true will be outputted after the quotation, the question mark. And whatever is false will be outputted, uh, should be used after the uh, the colon. So this is the syntax for the ternary operator. Let's just comment it out and write the syntax, the ternary operator. Because as we said earlier, syntax is what defines or rather the rules of a language. Like in English, you must end it your sentence in a, in a full stop in javascript you must end in a semicolon so every bit of javascript has its syntax and that is the syntax for the ternary operator so now here our condition was uh, condition one so we say condition one then we use the question mark and then we log to the console this if it is true so let's just paste it here and if it is false we use the colon we copy this else block and we paste it after the colon. Yeah, so when you save, you see that. Okay, it is going to the, it is wrapping down to the next line. Let me just clear this. Okay. Yeah. Now you can see that what was there in four lines of code has now changed to be in one line of code where we are testing the condition. And we can even say if condition is equals to true, there you can just write a complete condition. So if it's if condition is equals to true, it checks that using the question mark, which is the ternary operator, then logs to the console if it's true. And just as we said, after the colon, 
whatever is false will be logged to the console. So let's comment out this if statement so we can see the switch statement in action. Let's run the, the script. So you see that the script displays no condition is met because our condition one there has been set to false. Now let's put it to true and run the script again. So now uh, we see that if the condition is true, it should output condition is met. Because what was that put first was if the condition was false. So now let's run the script. Yeah, now you see that uh, it logs to our console. Condition is met. So this is the ternary operator. It's good to be used uh, when optimizing code. So as to maybe increase the speed of your of your functionality uh, sorry the speed of uh, operations it is also important that uh, you use fewer lines of code which are easily understandable so let's just reopen the readme and uh, remind ourselves of everything that we've done because uh, that was today's session okay uh, this one takes too much time to load uh, so here it is so here is the syntax for the if statement, for the if else statement, the else if, the ternary operator, the switch case, the break and continue keyword. So that's it for decision making in JavaScript. I uh, hope you enjoyed the session. If something is unclear, just rewind. If uh, something is not understandable or is not there in the video, just tag it down in the comment section. Also, if you like our content, please share. Hit the thumbs up button through comments will you'll help us to understand whether or not uh you you're getting this concept well bab will say thank you for watching to this point congratulations for giving us almost half an hour of your time we believe that now you understand choices and decisions real world applications in codes have a happy coding week